Hello everyone, this is Becky from Adult Services and welcome to Pinecone Canvas Art. So just to kind of give you an idea of the project that we're going to be working on today, we've got some examples that I found online. So you can get pretty creative with this, but the basics of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making floral pieces out of pine cones. Once we have that, we're going to attach it to the canvas, use some twigs and twine, and make it um, really fun and floral, um, all out of pretty natural supplies, which is pretty cool. Um, so the very first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the supplies that we have here today. So in your kit, you should get one of these canvas pieces. This is what we're going to put everything on. Also in your kit, you should get a couple of pine cones. Those are going to be pretty important because that's what our floral pieces are going to be made out of. And then from home, what you're going to need is you're going to need um, some kind of strong adhesive. Um, so we're, I'm going to use um, hot glue to attach things on my canvas. You're also going to need some paints. The paints that we're using are all acrylic. Um, these are just some of the ones that we're using. And have a variety of colors. Make them whatever color you would like. Today I think I'm going to use some darker tones because I'm going to make my background a little bit lighter. Um, you're also going to want some paint brushes, thin and thick, um, just so you can get different textures. And because we're going to be painting, you have the choice to paint on the canvas as well as on the pine cones. Um, so have some brushes, a cup of water. You're also going to get in your kit um, some twine. Yours might be a little bit different. Um, we've got a variety of them that we put in the kits. And then you're also gonna need to get on your own some sticks and twigs. I probably have more than what I need, but I wanted a variety just to figure out kind of what I wanted to make. So now that we have kind of the supplies that we need um, and what we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay this out down here just so it's kind of a reference point. I know I'm looking at it upside down, but I'll be fine. Just so you guys can kind of see comparison wise. And what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna paint the background of the canvas. Uh, I want mine to look kind of like like wood, kind of like these are, um, just cause that's what I prefer. But I want it to look like a whitewashed wood. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take some paint. I'm gonna get mostly white. Even though our background is white, we're still gonna need this to mix the colors with. So get some white. And then I'm also gonna use a little bit of brown and a little bit of gray. So we got that. And this one. Come on, gray paint. There we go. All right. So now that I have my paint, I'm going to start by doing a quick background. Let me get the paint up here so you can see. Just a quick background of just some white all across my canvas. Just so I can kind of have that first layer starting to get the brush strokes in there. Because with the wood grain, you want those brush strokes showing. It's going to kind of be like the grains in the wood. So I want my wood planks to be this way on my canvas. So that's the direction that I'm painting. And you can do the background of your canvas however you would like. It doesn't have to look like wood at all. It could be a solid color. You don't have to paint it. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the one picture that I showed here, they just put it on a white background and it looks adorable. So you can do pretty much anything you want with the background of it. Um, I just wanted to go for kind of this wood look. So I'm going to work on that. And if you guys enjoy these crafty projects, um, be sure to always look in our newsletter to see what's coming next. I know this month um, we have, we always have our Pinterest projects every month. Um, and those are always a lot of fun. And right now they are in the same exact type of format. So pre-recorded. So if you can't make the exact time, that's okay. You can view it a little bit later. Or if you need to pause while you're working on your project, 
that's fine too. That's one really nice thing about the pre-recorded videos and why we decided to go that way is so that you guys have a lot more um, flexibility when it comes to working on these projects. So I've got a very thin white background on here. Not sure if you guys can even see it or not. It's hard for me to see um, and I have some pretty decent lighting behind me. Now that I've got a little bit of the white here, I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of brown and mix it with the white. Oh, and I'm doing that off screen, so let me bring it over here. I've got the tiniest bit of brown, and I'm grabbing a bunch of white and mixing that in so that it's nice and light. And once it's real light, then I'm going to kind of dab out my brush a little bit here so that it'll be real thin and faint when I go through the first strokes here. And then I'm just going to drag it across, back and forth. And now we're getting some faint kind of wood looking marks across the canvas. And like I said, you don't have to do this technique. It's completely up to you. I just thought it'd be fun for my canvas to look like it's got some kind of wood grain to it. I'm just kind of spread that out everywhere. All right, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing just with a little bit of gray. Again, just so that we kind of get that hint, that little bit of tone to it. And it's fine if it mixes in with the brown. When you're making kind of natural colors, the nice thing is, is you can kind of mix and blend and it doesn't have to be super precise. It's not gonna be perfect because things in nature are not perfect. <laughs> So there is that. I think I might do a little bit more of the brown, maybe even a little bit darker this time, just in a few spots. Get a little bit along some of the edges here. And then if it's too dark, you can always make a layer to go over it with the white again. So I'm going to grab some white, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to brush in, go all across, so that there's paint that has covered my entire canvas. going. And then if any of you have little ones, um, we also have a program that we run monthly called Family Craft. And what we do with that is we get all sorts of crafty fun ideas um, from Pinterest or the internet or just bounce ideas off of other staff members here at the library. Um, and we find some fun projects that are good for the whole family. And so if you've got, you know, kids that want to get in on this crafty fun, you should check those out. All of our events are listed on our website. If you just go to our homepage, um, they're right there for you. Or if you don't like using the computer to register for things, that's fine too. Give us a call and we could always sign you up that way. All right. So now I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera so that you guys can see. I've got some nice streaks going along in there, so it looks kind of wood-like. The last thing that I'm going to add to this, um, and again, this is just because how I want my background to look, I'm going to put some lines in to kind of separate to make it look like it is different boards. So for that, I'm going to use a smaller, thinner brush. I'm going to get the dark, the brown that I was using there, and I'm just going to make a quick line across here. There's that. I'm going to do one more down here. Then I'm going to go the opposite direction, make sure that evenly distributing that color. There's 
can't. Okay. And then I'm going to blend it in just a little bit. So that it looks more natural. Alright, so that's nice and faded there. That one. Alright, so now you can see it kind of looks like it's divided that we kind of have some little like planks in there. I'm liking how it's looking, so this is going to be how I leave my background. Once you have finished with your background, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the floral part. Um, so we're gonna work with the pine cones. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this in front, or I'm gonna set this off to the side, just so that you guys can really see the work that I'm doing with the pine cone here. And then I've got a whole plate full of pine cones here. You, you're not going to need this many. You're not going to get this many in your kit. But I just wanted to show you kind of a variety of the sizes and types. And then also, I'm going to give you guys a quick preview. This is what a finished piece is going to look like. Um, so I did a few just to get a head start. Um, once you break the pine cone up, and this is one of two ways that you can do it. You will, this is a middle section of the pine cone, so it looks like there's petals coming out from the flower. There's also the bottom part of the pine cone, and that one, the flower will look more like this. Um, so two different ways you can do it. You can also break off pieces of the pine cone to make it look like there's petals. Have a lot of fun. Be really creative with it. There's so many things that we can do. Since I already have some of these pre-made. Um, I wanted to do that on purpose so that this video wouldn't be <laughs> super long for you guys. Oh, and then I also took the very tip of a pine cone and painted that green. Might use that as kind of a background, like, you know, the greenery in a floral arrangement. Um, so we've got that. We've got some petals that I painted too. Like I said, be super creative. I don't know how I'm going to want to arrange this on there yet. Um, I'm going to put these pine cones off to the side here. When you're working with the pine cones, depending on the type of scissors you have, you can try to use scissors. Um, this, um, all of the ones that I showed you here, they were all off of the same pine cone. Um, and it was older and kind of brittle, so I was able to just use scissors to cut it apart. But I did have some of the stuff flake off, that's why I took some petals there. Um, so I'm going to use tools with this next one that I show you. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use this pine cone here. Um, I like it just because I like more of the floral that look like this. But it's totally fine if you guys like the ones that look like this. However you want to do your arrangement, it's completely up to you and your creative mind. So now that I have this, I've just got some needle nose pliers here. Um, you can use garden shears. That would be really, really helpful. Um, I also have another set. Uh, I've got a wire cutter here. Um, whatever tools that you have in your house that are going to make it easy for you to pull the pine cone apart, basically. So I'm going to start trying to use these pliers here to and see. This one's a little bit older and probably brittle too, so that was real easy to clip off there. Now I'm going to go into the center here and start kind of clipping away. Might use a few petals. And that's why we included a few pine cones for you guys, so that you can have room to play with the design. And if you break pieces, it's not going to, you know, destroy your supply inventory. So once we get this off here, and you can see it's not the easiest thing. <laughs> so we've got some nice bits and pieces. I think I'm going to try to cut this down one more time just so that I can get a nice floral center. I actually, maybe I'll just try to get the bottom off. I might just pluck these pieces off. You can see 
It's not necessarily the easiest task. This is going to be probably one of the longer parts of the project. That's why I'm only doing one with you guys. Go back to using these cutters. Garden shears would probably make this really easy. I didn't have any garden shears with me, so I'm using what I have on hand. And almost, I just want to get this bottom off. <laughs> and then, please, please, please after you're finished with your project, if you could share it with us, we love seeing the projects that you guys finish up um, and seeing how they turn out. We love, you know, getting feedback from our patrons and it's probably one of the best parts of running these programs and stuff is just seeing what everyone can come up with. So you can email those to us at reference at shorewoodtroylibrary.org. Or if you want to come into the library, you can show us that way. Um, just come up to the desk, hold your phone up. I know we can't can't actually touch phones or anything right now. Um, there we go. Finally getting that bottom part off. All right. A nice flat bottom. It'll probably stick out a little bit, but I'm fine with that. I want a real nice big flower for the center of my piece. So. Now that we made a mess with that, <laughs> I am going to take this, and actually I think I'm going to use this guy too. Maybe make another green piece, might make a few petals. So see, you can do a lot with one pine cone. Like I said, this other one here, all of these, they came from the same pine cone too. So two pine cones, that's going to give you quite a few flowers, especially for the size of the canvas that we're using. I'm going to put this off to the side now. And I am going to get some paint here. I think this one I'm going to make, oh, decisions, decisions. I'm gonna make it a dark red one to go along with the other ones that I did. I really like this dark red color. Um, and if you guys like it too, it was called Barn Red. So there's that. All right some paint out there and then I'm also going to get some of that dark green to make that green piece and again you guys can't see my paint plate but here's those colors there and I'm going to move my finished pieces so that you can see my paint plate while I am making this all right so I'm going to get a brush that is kind of mid-sized to start working on this and let's see these it, I don't know if you can tell from the film but these they're a little loose but they're still attached so I'm gonna leave them on while I paint if they fall off it's not a big deal all right and we're just gonna kind of put the paint everywhere sometimes if you need to really get in those cracks and crevices you might feel like you're globbing the paint a little bit it's okay and it's okay if it's not fully covered too. If you want it to have kind of a rustic, natural look, then that is that is just fine. We're gonna paint these real quick. And then once I'm finished painting these, we're gonna actually assemble our project. And I've already got my hot glue um, plugged in so that it's starting to melt for me and be ready when we're done with this in just a couple of minutes. So we'll get through this real quick. Now before when I said that we would love for you to share your finished projects, if you guys have ideas that you think would be fun for the library to do, um, we would love to hear those too. If you want to email that reference email address with an idea, then we would be happy to take a look at it and see if it would be something that, you know, we could, we could work on. <laughs> All right. And then I know we're working on crafty stuff right now, but if there's any of you out there that um, have 
heard about, you know, the ebooks that the library offers, you've thought about it, but you're not quite sure, you know, how it works or how it would work on your specific device, we're actually doing some very small, socially distant, in-person programs on how to use the different um, apps that we have for our digital collection here at the library. So if that sounds interesting to you, we've got several of those throughout the month. Um, again, go online to our event calendar or just give us a call and we can let you know what dates those are and get you signed up for one if you'd like. Those programs, they'll go over Hoopla, they'll go over Overdrive, Libby, RB Digital. I'm not sure if you guys knew that you can check out magazines on your phones and tablets. That one, I was really excited about when we first got that one. Alright. So I think this green piece is looking pretty well covered for what I want. I don't mind having a little bit of kind of the rustic actual pine, pine cone showing through. So I'm going to leave that. That one I think is good for me. I might touch the base a little bit here so that it's not fully. There we go. And I'm probably going to cover that up with some of the other pieces too. So now I'm going to move on to my flower piece. With this one, what I did for the other ones is I painted all of kind of the petal areas in the one color and then the centers I did another one. You can kind of have some speckles throughout there. You can have some streaks. Um, again, there's a lot of creative freedom with this project. So you can see from the examples, they had very different styles when they painted theirs. Whatever you think looks great, do it. <laughs> All right, so for this one, I'm gonna use a little bit bigger brush because we've got a bigger pine cone here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the red and just start painting. And you'll see some of these are a little loose too. If they break off, it's fine. Um, there's layers behind it. And even if there's not, I mean, hot glue adhesive, it works wonders. <laughs> so, and like I said before, nature is never perfect, so our little piece of art here is not going to be perfect, and because it's not perfect, that makes it great. And we're just filling in all these spots here. The real nice thing about acrylics is that they're going to dry really quick too, so by the time I'm done with this one, my green piece should be pretty much dry. And then I already pre-made those other pieces. So if you want to make everything ahead of time, wait like 20, 30 minutes and then finish up your project, you can definitely do that too. Or if you want to make it all in one setting because of how quick acrylic paints dry, if that's the paint that you're gonna use, it works great too. And feel free to use whatever is around your house. Like if all you have is a little bit of maybe some like wood stain or something, throw it on a few of the pine cones, leave some of the pine cones natural. You'll wind up having like different colored, you know, bouquet and that would work. All right. More of these, and once I get all of the top pieces that are gonna be shown done, then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do some of the back pieces too. We've got a few more that we want to work on here. And again, the way that I'm doing mine. I'm okay if there's bits and pieces that are showing through that are that natural brown of the pine cone, just because I want it to be more of a rustic look. Okay, so that's filled in pretty well. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the back side real quick. All right, getting this done. And then if you guys do send us a picture of your project, let us know how you thought the program went too. We, we want to know what is working well for you guys. Um, 
you know, the whole virtual programs, it's new to us too. <laughs> so we're trying to adapt and provide the best programming that we can. Um, and I'm okay with getting my fingers a little painted and messy. I don't mind. If you do mind, feel free to let these sit while they do dry because, like I said, if you're using acrylic paint, it is going to dry quickly. And I am not being delicate or precise with this at all which is fine because that's kind of the rustic style that I want it to look like anyway. All right, so that is nice and covered. There are bits showing through, but I again, that's how I want mine to look. So style-wise, this looks perfect. And then I'm going to get just a touch of yellow to do the center of this. And then again, it's not going to be perfect. I don't want it to be, expect it to be. With the center of this, I'm getting the very center of the pine cone and then also some of the little edges because we want to make it look like an actual flower. And actual flowers, you know, that pollen center, it's it's not neat and tidy. <laughs> so I think I think that looks pretty good. That's how I'm going to leave mine. Might even streak it out a little bit in the center. Oh yeah, I like how that looks. Kind of mixed with the red a little. All right, I'm gonna show this to you guys because I like how that turned out. So I changed it up just a tad. I like how that looks, so I'm gonna leave it that way. All right. And do just a tad more yellow right in the center. All right, done. So I'm going to take a paper towel. You might want to have one of those handy as well. Sorry, I should have mentioned that in the beginning of the video. Just to get my fingers so that I'm not smudging anything. Acrylic paint typically washes off pretty well. It might stick to your nails for a little bit. But otherwise, it's usually pretty easy to clean up. It will stay on clothes, though. So if you are using acrylic paint, be very careful with that. So now I'm going to bring my canvas back over and my canvas is completely dry. So there's that again. And I am going to start laying out, whoop, moving that flower real quick. Let's go to the side here. All right. And now I'm gonna start trying to lay out the flowers to see how I like them to look. And I'm gonna do this, try to do it upside down so that you guys get the good view. Um, so what we're going to do here, so I've got my green floral, I like that one, Whoop. and I think I might actually have too many flower pieces, so I'm going to have to pick and choose. So we're going to get this one in here, I like that, I definitely want one of these blue ones on there, get that there. I want to get that yellow guy, give it some variety. There'll be one more blue in front. Yeah. And I'm going to get these, when I put them on, I'm going to actually glue them so that they're standing upright. So we've got that. Let's see, and then I think I'm going to put my big red one right in front here. So now that I know kind of where I'm going to put my floral pieces, I'm going to glue down my twigs first, and I wanted mine to look kind of like a little bouquet, so what I'm going to do, got a few here, let's see, I'm going to have to trim them down, so again, you're going to need um, either garden shears or wire cutters or however you want to cut these, so I've got those branches here, so I'm going to go ahead and start figuring out where because they're going to fall behind it, so get right there, okay, just one there, 
That one's actually perfect size. So we'll leave that be. Okay. Got that one. We'll trim that there. Oop. There we go. That. And I really kind of like on my branches. And yours is going to, I mean, depend on what you have out in the yard or what you find out at the park. Um, I really like when they have kind of the multiple edges here. That's just a personal preference. Yours can look however you would like. We'll get one last one here. Okay. So now that we have those, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my pine cones out of the way. And I'm going to take my twine, and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to wrap it around the branches. So get a nice piece there. And since I have my little bouquet, I'm just going to wrap it around. I want to wrap mine several times and we're going to include a nice chunk of twine so that you guys can do this um, or you don't have to do it at all. Some of those paintings, they didn't have the twine around it. So once I have the twine woven around it, you might want to leave it a little loose so that you can adjust your branches and everything. Once I have that in there. Gonna arrange those how I like. Okay. And then I am just going to glue the back of this down. And I've got it a little bit loose so that I can still rearrange branches if I want. All I did was throw some hot glue on there just to kind of make the edges adhere to each other and then I'm going to trim, let that dry off a second, trim this twine, okay, so there's that, put that out here, and then I'm going to add a little bit more glue to the twine. Now the branches are still a little bit loose in there. Now that I've got some glue, I'm going to delicately and carefully flip this over so that I can glue it onto my board here. Now because it's loose, I could always like take out the branches if I wanted to, rearrange them, which I might do with a couple of them. A couple of them are a little bit low. For the most part, I like how it looks. I might turn this guy, yeah, turn that around like that. That looks good. Okay, and once you get your branches down in an order that you like them, then you're going to adhere those to your canvas as well. So you'll just put on like an edge. There. Stick that on. Kind of put it in a place where you won't necessarily see it try to. The nice thing with hot glue is you could always pick those edges if you can see it. Okay. That. This one over here. And then you can also hide those edges with your pine cone flowers too because they're going to be standing up on the canvas. And you can also use different types of glue and adhesive as well. So if you wanted to use like a clear dry type of glue so that you don't even have to worry about the back pieces. You can always do that. Okay, 
So I don't know if you noticed, but some of my twigs and pine cones, they've left a little bit of rubble there. So I'm just going to tap this. I like it, the natural look though, so we're good with that. Now I'm going to start adding the floral pieces. So get a good chunk of glue on the back so that it stays on. And then just go for it. I'm going to put that one right there. Again, lots of glue. I don't know if you guys can see that over there or not. And sometimes, depending on the shape of everything, you might need to hold it up a little bit until the hot glue dries to it. That's one advantage of using hot glue with this is that it dries very quickly. So you can just hang on to something for a little while, like the flowers if they're upright, just so that it kind of gets where it needs to be. That. Let's see. I really want to use my big flower in here. So it's not fully dry yet. I did glob on the paint quite a bit. That's okay. I should use this in the camera. I'm gonna really get a good chunk of glue on that. And then I'm gonna prop it up right in the center there. There we go. Use that paper towel to wipe off my fingers again. Let's see, I think I'm going to put my other green piece on here too. That one's mostly dry. Put this one on the other side over here. And then, like I said, with the hot glue, just holding that in place for a little bit while it sets. And bam, that one's good to go. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and get my blue flower on here now. throw a couple petals off of that one. Use your creativity. Do whatever you think is going to look fun and pretty and however you want it to look. So now we've got that. I'll throw this one down here. Like that. And then decisions. Yeah, I think I'm going to throw this other blue one back here. Yeah, I like keeping the, the reds and the blues. I mean, you can mix and match. You can make it yours. Make it fun. And have fun with it. That's that's the most important part. Ugh, I can't talk. The most important part of these projects is having some fun. That's what crafting is all about. Relaxation, fun, creativity. Let's see. I can't decide. Yeah, I think I'm going to go over to the side with it. So it looks like it's coming off this lonely branch up here. Okay. Keep that in place for a few seconds. I'm gonna add a couple of those petals. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna put a bow on mine and then I'll show you guys the finished product. Letting that dry. There we go. All right, 
Everything. Mm. Oh yeah, maybe I'll stick some petals back up here. Give it a little color there. we go there is my nice little bouquet I'm gonna take what is left of my twine here I'm gonna make a fun little bow out of it so for the bow I'm just gonna tie regular bow and then you can always just pull the edges trim it a little bit Let's see. trim off these ends here there we go and I'm gonna put a little dab of glue on the back put that right in the middle And there we have it, pine cone canvas art. I hope you guys had a lot of fun and I hope that you send some projects over. I'd really love to see those and we'll see you at the next library program. Thanks and have a good day. Bye, stay safe.